bad video games. What exactly are the criteria for determining whether a game is bad? Ugly graphics, broken controls, discordant on melodic music? All of these and more have been thrown out as reasons to slap the stigmatizing label on these trashy titles. An enormous amount of negative bent written in video reviews have sprung up in recent years that emphasize these horrible qualities, furthering the aforementioned branding. Are the critics correct in their assessment of the mounds of shovelware and licensed cash grabs? Perhaps. But as an old saying goes, one man's trash is another's treasure. Anyone familiar with my LJ and Defender series knows that I have a proclivity to dig what most people consider to be dreck. I prefer to keep an open mind and be as fair as I can to these poor, huddled cartridges and discs. The majority consensus has judged these to be offenders of the worst kind. But in this video game court, even the worst title is innocent until proven guilty. Welcome out to the debut episode of my third series. This is an idea that I've had since I came up with the LJN Defender, and I've given hints here and there about it, but I didn't have the concept fully developed until right now. The spark of the show came from a desire to give an LJN Defender-like treatment to the non-LJN games that had been dragged from the meat grinder, and it was originally going to be considered an LJN Defender bonus segment. However, the more I thought about it, I realized I wanted to do something more, and that's how Innocent Until Proven Guilty came into fruition. Just to clarify, this isn't the LJN Defender. I'm gonna give these defendants a fair trial, but I'm also not gonna overlook their faults. I'll stick up for it when I feel its reputation has been cruelly tarnished, but I'm also gonna point out its shortcomings when I see them. On this initial installment, I wanna start off with something fairly simple, to test out the inaugural waters. The focus of the Innocent Until Proven Guilty pilot is a notorious license-based platformer, Kemko Seika's Bugs Bunny Birthday Blowout. Bugs Bunny Birthday Blowout was released in the fall of 1990. Birthday Blowout is the sequel to the previous year's Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle. Whereas Crazy Castle is a maze-esque puzzler, Birthday Blowout is a side-scroller in the tradition of the US Super Mario Bros. 2. Further unlike Crazy Castle, Birthday Blowout has a story! It's Bugs' 50th birthday, and he receives an invitation to go to his own party from his fan club. Am I the only one who thinks this sounds strange? Hearing of this, Wile E. Coyote and the other Looney Tunes become all sorts of jealous, and try to rain on the rabbit's big day by attempting to keep him from the titular blowout. Q Level 1. Being a platformer, Bugs can jump freely, unlike Crazy Castle where he couldn't jump at all. Bugs has one weapon in his arsenal, but it's a doozy. A big gray hammer with a satisfying strike sound worthy of Thor's mighty Mjolnir, which is controlled by the B button. The control scheme is the typical NES standard and is fairly fluid and responsive. The gameplay itself, on the other hand, isn't always as smooth. An average playthrough of Birthday Blowout will have numerous instances of choppy frame rates, flickering sprites, and slowdown. It doesn't result in a broken, frustrating experience, but a mid-period NES release such as this should not have these issues. Sluggishness aside, the main initial objective is to collect as many carrots as possible. Once a carrot is collected, the space that they occupy turns into a Warner Brothers block. These serve the purpose of being additional platforms that make it easier to reach certain heights or land difficult jumps. The carrots are also used as currency in the post-level bonus rounds, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Birthday Blowout deviates slightly from the traditional run from left to right, point A to B style side-scrollers. There are various warp pipes around the levels that can lead to the next segment in the progression to the goal, or send the player back where they started instead. However, I've found that the general rule is that, whether traveling left or right, head as far as possible in that direction. The warp located at the far end will generally lead to the goal. 
Side-scrolling veterans should be able to breeze through the levels of Birthday Blowout with relative ease, especially with the aid of the Mighty Steel to clear the path. The only major hindrance, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, involves the post-damage phase. Usually the character is allowed to take care of business as normal, with the added benefit of a few seconds of invulnerability. In Birthday Blowout, after the bunny is besieged by baddies, he's unable to use his hammer until he recovers from the hit. This would be okay if enemies could also be defeated by stomping on them Mario style, but that's not the case. For those precious seconds, our hero is virtually a sitting duck. Er, rabbit. Once the Waskly Wabbit gets to the last area of most levels, it's time for a showdown with one of his former friends turned foe. The most common and easiest adversary is Daffy Duck. Daffy always appears on screen with a big sign that says Rabbit Season and a huge carrot resting on top of it. The Daffy fight deviates greatly from the rest of the gang in that it's not a fight at all. Simply get that carrot to advance to the next area. Other notable characters that make an appearance are Elmer Fudd, Yosemite Sam, Foghorn Leghorn, Pepe Le Pew, and the final boss, the Tasmanian Devil, among others. The source material is treated respectfully here, and it definitely has that Looney Tunes feel. The boss fights are pretty easy, for the most part. The majority take only three hits to defeat, and their offense is puny by NES standards. What makes it worse is that previous bosses return again in later levels, so it gets kind of repetitive near the end. As sad as this is to say, the stages that precede the battle are generally more of a challenge, but that's not saying much. After each boss is taken down, it's time for the previously mentioned bonus rounds. There are two kinds of bonuses, a bingo and a whack-a-mole wannabe called Willy the Weasel. In the bingo, the player is allotted five balls with which to choose a number from the board in the hopes of aligning them in a row. Three balls in a row will result in a one-up, however, Four in a row will trigger the mother of all prizes, the five up. There may be a strategy to getting the five or one up every single time, but I don't really see the point in it. Spamming the button repeatedly is guaranteed to get one and five ups over time. Willy the Wombat, <laughs> import gaming for the win. <laughs> Willy Wombat <laughs> for Saturn. <laughs> Watch import gaming for the win. Jimmy Hopper show. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> Link in the description or on the screen. <clears throat> oh man, <clears throat> sorry about that. Uh, must be coming down to something. Anyway, Willy the Weasel involves whacking the pests that pop out of the holes. Whacking ten nets a one up. Clobbering fourteen gives another one up. One ups are rewarded for every goal met during the time limit. It should be fairly obvious by now that Bugs Bunny Birthday Blowout craps out lives by the barrel, and I had nearly 70 lives at the end of my playthrough. This makes an already easy adventure even easier. There comes a point when dying or getting hit really doesn't matter. Anyone who's put hours in getting their fill of old school 2D action will most likely have this completed in an hour or less. Difficulty isn't everything though, and Birthday Blowout has many redeeming qualities that make up for its simplicity. Like I mentioned previously, the platforming's pretty solid, the Looney Tunes are well represented, and Bugs wields a wicked hammer. Adding to that list of assets is the fantastic soundtrack by one of my absolute favorite composers from the NES era, Hiroyuki Masano. Masano's work was a mainstay of Kemko Seika during this time period. I've said it before, and I'll say it a thousand times, he composed the music for Deja Vu. If Peoria Streets isn't enough proof to showcase how talented Masano-san is, then I don't know what is. The compositions featured in Birthday Blowout may not be of the same caliber as that masterpiece, but there's some really solid stuff here. There are six worlds, and each is accompanied by a new theme. They range from jaunty and playful, to tracks that come off as a less spooky, uninvited, or Shadowgate B-side.
My absolute favorite is heard in the cave setting of level 4. It has the right touch of eerie mysteriousness, again minus the foreboding elements of the aforementioned point-and-click classics. Propelled along by these merry melodies, the castle, the sixth and last stop before our hero's party, is reached in less than an hour. This is the hardest section of Birthday Blowout, with plenty of spikes, bombs, and hurtful falling debris. There are also invisible pitfalls similar to those in Simon's Quest that'll drop the jokester down to the spikes below, but they're far less frequent and require minimal effort to maneuver around. Taz is waiting at the end of 6-4 with a stockpile of footballs to... give the bunny a concussion? I don't know. Taz may take more damage than the rest of the Revenge Seekers, but he's still no match for the brain-bashing bugs. After the Whirling Weakling is dispatched, the iconic WB star finally makes it to his party. Awaiting him past the doors is the shock of a lifetime! So shocking that he couldn't contain himself, apparently. Oops. His admiring fan club was actually the supposedly pissed off peers after all. All of the preceding mayhem was just some very funny tricks. Yikes. With friends like that, who needs enemies? Birthday Blowout's ending is certainly better than a lot of the bad NES finales. At least it has several pictures, and there are no typographical or grammar errors. Score one for the developers at Chemco! Overall, Bugs Bunny Birthday Blowout is a pretty good action-adventure entry, but it's not without its flaws. Are they enough to condemn it to the death penalty? Let's refer to the evidence. This Kemko Saker release contains solid platforming, with less linear level design than its peers. Enemies, WB blocks, and even geyser-like springs can be used as platforms, and the hammer, besides looking really cool, is necessary to reach certain spots. It may not be breaking new ground, but it is fairly innovative. As for the story, at least Birthday Blowout actually has one, rudimentary as it is. Look at it in the context that cutscenes in video games weren't entirely commonplace in that era. It may not be Ninja Gaiden, but the appropriate use of the beloved Looney Tunes icon should get at least a point in its favor. Wrap all of this around with a score by the talented Hiroyuki Masano, toss in the element of extra life rewarding bonus rounds, and cap it off with a plot twist ending, and we have a respectable franchise-based title that shows that not all licensed tie-ins are trash. With that said, Birthday Blowout has flaws that make it a bit of a birthday bust. In spite of the tight controls, the gameplay is littered with reoccurring bouts of slowdown, and it constantly appears to be coasting along at a lower frame rate. It feels like Bugs is walking on the moon at times. On top of this, the heroic hair is further handicapped by a post-hit phase that makes him temporarily invincible, but disables the use of his only weapon! That's just wrong on so many levels! In addition to these faults, Birthday Blowout takes an already repetition-prone genre and scales it up to a whole new level! The same enemies pop up all the time, from the regular toads, bombs, and hammerheads to the bosses themselves! There's only so many ways Daffy Duck can pester his nemesis, and I can tell that the developers felt the same way, since at a certain point, they got lazy and gave us this! Come on, Kemco, you're better than that! This is so easy that toddlers could probably beat this after picking up an NES controller for the first time! Might as well rename it Baby's First Platformer! All of the bosses are simple, the levels are simple, everything is simple! Even the post-hit hammer disability, while really annoying, doesn't matter much in the long run since even if the bunny bites it, the bonus round dishes out lives like Oprah gives away cars! A case could be made that Kemko Seika created the ancestor for a lot of the current-gen trademarks. Minimal challenge, slow health reduction, near-unlimited lives dished out by the metric ton? Doesn't sound that far off from regenerative health and checkpoints around every corner! If you're looking for an 8-bit offering that's NES tough, stay as far away as you can from Bugs Bunny Birthday Blowout. 
Now that the arguments have concluded with valid points brought up by both sides, it's time for the final verdict. In the case of Bugs Bunny birthday blowout, I find the accused to be ultimately innocent. But with some heavy duty community service needed to be performed. Kemko Seika certainly knew how to produce a quality title and Bugs Bunny birthday blowout isn't bad by any means, but a few more coats of polish could have brought it from pretty good to perhaps Disney Capcom status. I fully admit that difficulty should not be a judge for quality, however, a modicum of challenge would have been appreciated. I'm not talking about Bucky O'Hare or Back to the Future level here, but maybe something like Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Say what you will about the LJN published catalog, but at least the majority of them had great replay value stemming from their difficulty. Case in point, a couple weeks back, I popped in Back to the Future again. I played it three times in a row, actually getting to the DeLorean each time, finally hitting 88 miles per hour on the last try. Every playthrough was more satisfying than Birthday Blowout. This is largely due to the difficulty differences. In spite of the monotony and guaranteed win, Birthday Blowout is a good game, one that I highly enjoy and have enjoyed ever since I rented it as a kid. The level design is varied and multi-layered, the environment and sprites are vibrant and detailed, and I've said it before and I'll say it a thousand times over, Hiroyuki Masano. Hiroyuki Masano trumps all. If Barbie Race and Ride had a soundtrack by Masano's son, I'd feed horses sugar cubes and solve beaver puzzles 24-7. Fortunately, Birthday Blowout is one of those cheapy NES games that can usually be picked up for around five bucks, so I definitely recommend it for any NES owner looking to add a car to their collection. Of course, that's just my verdict. If you feel that playing Birthday Blowout is the equivalent of watching the original three Transformers films simultaneously, that's fine, and feel free to share your opinion in the comments below. This is just the beginning of Innocent Until Proven Guilty, and there'll be much worse titles to come in the future, you can count on that. Will the guy that actually enjoys crappy games give one a guilty verdict? Tune in to an upcoming installment of Innocent Until Proven Guilty to find out! Now, of course, BAM! Social media, right there, as always, do that. And as far as the next upcoming video, I don't know what it's gonna be. That's weird, but yeah, this is the first one in a long time that I'm actually clueless right now as, as to what it's gonna be, so. Hey, it's a surprise to you, it's a surprise to me, it's a surprise to all of us, so. Tune in, I don't know, probably early August? Maybe later July? I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna take it a little bit slower. The last month where I did like three in a row was a bit overkill, so I'm just gonna slow it down. You know, it's a bit too much for me. So yeah, I look for, forward to that. And um, also, I just, I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but I just hit 2,000 subscribers. So that's awesome, that's amazing. Thank all of you so much for your support and for watching my videos. It, it truly means a lot to me. Also, a huge thanks to, of course, to the sites, you know, ScrewTag, RetroWare, GameStar81, all those guys who helped me out, helped help me get where I am. Truly means a lot to me, so this is, just the beginning, still growing. There'll be many, many more videos to come. So, until next time, when another questionable quality entry goes under the microscope, court is adjourned. Mm -hmm.